It looks like the lens cap's on, but it's not. Whoa! I think that Douglas Adams said it best in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. He said, about 2,000 years after some bloke was nailed to a tree for saying how good it would be if we were all nice to each other for a change. <laughs> what did what start it? We're in Lavinia, in Italy, in northern Italy, right by Switzerland, in the Alps. So question number one. <laughs> You still haven't said what we're doing. I said, what are we doing? You said, we're in Lavinia in Italy. <laughs> you know in the morning when you feel all combobulated? Like, my face is all... Do you want two pairs? Mm. These are sun god as well, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, good, good, good. No, we, we posted these questions. We were going to do a QA, and a and then we just completely didn't. We're, we're, we're rookies to this to this YouTube. So anyway, I asked for some questions on Instagram. There's been loads of questions on the YouTube comments. At the time, I screenshotted them all because we were gonna do it the next day. And then we were getting on the plane and I didn't want to get on the plane. I was all off it because I didn't want to leave Nicaragua. So we just got on the plane and sat in silence. And I watched Bohemian Rhapsody and it was amazing. And then I was all barred up and then we went to Slash Cup. How do you become professional? You convince somebody to pay you. That's it, isn't it? Professional is the definition of being paid to do something. If you're a carpenter, you gotta say, I, th I think you should pay me for my carpentry expertise. You know, and I'll, I'll make you a table in exchange for carrots. Oh, I've been sleeping next to that. Then you're a professional carpenter. Well, do you think that's what that que do you think that question is done? I think Goofy Boys 03 is like really pumped on that answer. Come on, Danny, stop messing around. <laughs> This is a funny situation. Man. This chick's looking at him and she's like, oh, look at the state of them horns. And she's so captivated in him that she forgets that she farted and this bloke behind is like, oh. Next question. I should look. This is actually a pretty wild question. Is sports media consumption and specifically the increase of Instagram skiers creating more or less joy for the athletes that ski for a living? Never really thought of that before. I think it's just different and, and you know, we're ever adapting. But I think the basis of skiing for a living is, is, is doing what you love. And then there are a few, you know, things you've got to do to keep that alive. You know what I mean? And, and now that's make sure that your social media is on point. Previously it was, um, you know, be ready for the big competitions like X Games once a year. And, you know, you put, all of your effort into filming your movie part, etc. So I think that it's just a different thing, that's all. And I think that some people are exceptional at marketing themselves. I couldn't respect them more. This is such a relevant question for me right now because we're here with Danny trying to make a, a YouTube series that people like and it is a very new and different way, you know, me being a professional skier. So, I'm enjoying it, I love it, I think it's great, and I think that in a way, it actually opens up the door to a, to a lot more people being professional skiers. So, I, I, I'm certainly not getting any less joy out of what I'm doing, because people are consuming their content differently. I'm actually enjoying it, and that means I get to travel around with Danny. What a joyous thing for anybody. <laughs> what a burden. Have you taken the wrong turn again? Oh, we missed where the camera stuff's getting dropped yeah. off. This is Chloe, face of days. Was there ever a particular moment where you suddenly realized I'm a pro skier, or was it a gradual realization over time? Like the first thing I think of when, you know, you say that, like every day I wake up and I'm like, holy guacamole, I'm living my dream, you know? I'm professional skiers, this is, this is exactly what I want to do. and. You know, it's quite incredible, you know, people are paying me to do it, it's, it's, it's unreal. So, I sort of do think about it all the time. It's a very conscious thought in my mind. What really changed the game was, was when I got sponsored by Monster. It was pretty amazing. That, that was a massive life lesson for me as well. You know, no, no agent or nothing like that and just negotiating these contracts by myself. And I think when that Monster one came through, I was in the summer at IF3, in Annecy at the lake, it was about sunset and it was just, that's done. Shook hands, signed the contract. And I think that was a pretty eye-opening moment where I was like, yeah, I'm a pro 
first gear, and I'm going to do this for real. Marcelo underscore glues one two three asked, "What keeps you invested in skiing, and why do you love it so much?" And that's very similar to what Murphree said. Uh, what keeps you invested in skiing? Learning new tricks, traveling to different locations, and the people, or all, all that stuff. Loads of people are asking Corey story. <laughs> I like that name. What keeps me invested in skiing? And, and, and why do I do it? Why do I keep on doing it? I've been traveling the world and not having a, a base for for 12 years now. And, oh, well, it's not a burden. I mean, it's just a quite a big thing, really. It's, 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 it's a thing. But I love skiing, and I do. And I think the secret to it, as far as I'm concerned, is I don't always love it. That's the, that's the fact of the matter. That's the truth of the whole situation is I don't always love it. And quite often... I have to sit myself down, you know, with Jamie or Sharpie or, you know, someone and one of my friends and sit there and be like, okay, what am I doing? What do I want? And, you know, after a minute, it always comes back down to the same thing, you know, like X Games. I want desperately to an X Games slope style and, and the Olympics as well. That's like the resounding thing. And at the very least, I, I, I want to go there and do my absolute best, you know. One, because I can. Two, because I'm so invested in it already. And, and three, because that's, you know, my lifelong dream, you know. I think the most important thing is assessing the goals. Once I do that, have a reset, set my brain, it's like, just like last week, I end up going to these events and going to these places and continuing the life I'm doing on, on a level. But, you know, emotionally, I've, like, assessed my goals. I'm there. Suddenly, I just realise, I look around, I'm travelling the world, going to the most incredible places all over the shop, all of my best friends are there. We have the best time ever, skiing, learning tricks, competing um, at, at the highest level. And you know, all the pressures and ups and downs with that, it's great fun. We have these amazing parties. We, we got these great friends that are all, all over the world. Um, and suddenly I just sort of remember, I'm like, why did I even need to assess what I'm doing? I love this stuff. This is actually a really cool question from Seb Heaney. You've always been one of my favorite skiers and I've always wondered what's the story about being on Solomon. You've always been on Solomon and I've never really heard about it. It would be sick to know how that happened. I have always been on Solomon actually, it's, it's cool. Um, since I was 12 years old, it, it was Pat Sharpo Sharpie who's now, well, has kind of always been since then, you know, one of my best friends. And he's the GP coach now, which is so perfect because, you know, we go back. So what, 12, 27, 15 years? And I haven't actually ridden anything else but Solomon. You know, I test skis and, and everything to get a feel for what I like and what I want to do, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty loyal. I, I don't really want to use any other skis, you know? We've been a long way. It's been awesome building on that relationship for 15 years. And obviously, initially, it was Solomon UK, and it was with Sharpie. I was actually his first ever person he put on the team, which is cool. And we sort of come so far from that it's been a long time and obviously developing myself and my career with Solomon and developing the skis and boots and bindings and everything along with it has been it's a wicked journey and it's so nice to sort of keep those relationships and build on them I've learned so much from you know the brands that I've worked with and, and Solomon no one I've worked with longer now the story about being on Solomon for me is just I want to make the best skis possible if I'm happy with them I'm pretty certain that you know, other people will be happy with them and, and, and want to use them, want to buy them. So that's great. And, and I think the product's coming on really well. I'm, I'm proud of where they're at. And, and, and also I'm really proud of how much, you know, Solomon are actually putting back in. Like right now, this season, I just got three pairs of different, or two, two new pairs of brand new skis and they're like prototypes that are testing out this spring and figuring out what's going to be the best thing to use for next season, so. It's exciting and it's an honor to have that, you know. It's a privilege and I get my input and it gets fed straight back into the system and the skis that you get to ride, so. <laughs> Voita underscore Bresky. What does Padme say when the Senate cheers for Palpatine after declaring himself emperor of a new empire? So this is how democracy dies in thunderous applause. No research. I hope I got that right. Oh, Natalie, Natalie Portman. How do you overcome the fear of trying new tricks and new features? Charlie Self underscore underscore underscore. That 
is similar to what I said before about motivation, knowing what you want, why you want it, why you're willing to chuck yourself off a jump and, you know, take risks. Um, that is very important. Then once you've got that addressed, in my opinion, you really need to prepare for everything that's gonna happen. So for example, if you wanna do a new trick and you get to the park and you've, this is a new park, you've never been there before, you gotta get used to the jump. Or for example, if it's windy and it's a bit gusty and you don't exactly know the speed, all of these outside factors you need to cancel. You know, you need to make them as consistent as humanly possible. If anything, goes wrong, you don't want it to be one of those things that's within your control, like knowing the jump, knowing where there's an icy landing, blah, blah, blah. And then preparation, you know, I mean, I'm not a huge trampoline person or an airbag person, to be honest, but those facilities exist. You can go out there and, and, and practice that trick, whatever it is, in, on a million different way safer sources than um, resources, than, than just straight onto, you know, hard packed snow. So be prepared. Yeah, this is really good. Scott underscore Galt. Is Danny better at skiing or at videography? Huey sort of Q face and wacky face. Danny's a really good skier. I'm not I'm not even playing right now. Danny's a really good skier. Better than he thinks he is. But he is really good at videography and that, that side of things. You're better at that, dude, but you are really good at skiing. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. Melkers Vedjaland. Don't know where, if that's one big word or, or, or multiple. What is your favorite competition and why? X Games, no shadow of a doubt, because it's the greatest, because it's everything I aspire to, because it's everything that everyone in my generation aspired to. It's the coolest of the cool, doing it at the biggest show. Done, tune in. Cocktail sauce, what's your short-term goal at the moment? My short-term goal at this very moment is to get good at spinning in the forwards rotation, bios and rodeo -y sort of extra spins for the big tricks, you know? So, you know, new goal, on point, that's this spring. Okay, Marcus Richer 15, how TF are you so handsome? It's just born, man. Sash Con Azaruk or Sash Con Azaruk or Sash Con Azaruk. Did you go to college or university? No, I didn't. Sauce. What genre did Taylor Swift used to sing before pop? Oh, oh country. Come that's on, why that's I love easy. her. Yeah, that, that that's was easy. Song. She's the greatest. Nick underscore Ern underscore Wood E. What's your favorite drink? Soda water with lemon in it. Barter. Barter Tom. Bar 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 Barterton. What gym work do you do to help with your skiing? Previous episode. Link above. <laughs> What's your guilty pleasure? Surfing. In the middle of the winter, it's guilty because it's <laughs> all the way away from here. Any new tricks in the pipeline? Loads, hence why we're here. Thanks for having us, Motolino. Who's your best mate on the circuit? Asked Seb Foster 91. Very difficult question. My brother's the man, and then basically everyone that I ski with is just like a brother, you know? It's wonderful. I don't even want to list anyone's names because then I'll miss somebody off and you know what I mean? It's, it's an honor to actually do everything that I do with all of my best friends. And then we will finish off with, can't remember who said it. What's your favorite trick? 360 Mew. We've been getting loads of questions and feedback in all the comments. So thank you so much for that really because it goes a really long way. So, so keep that up, that's wonderful. With all the questions, I decided that we'd do a question and answer style video. Obviously because I didn't want to sit around all day answering questions, we sort of did it while we were skiing. So hope you enjoyed that, that's today's video. But what I want to hit you with is a question from me to you specifically. What should I do in the summer? What do you want to see? Do you want me to keep doing these videos? Obviously I'm a skier, that's a winter thing. There's some winter in New Zealand, but you know, I take some breaks during the year. Do you, do you want me to keep doing this? Do you, or, or not? Would you prefer to just see it in the winter? Obviously, I just took that break and went to Nicaragua. I had a great time. It was it was amazing little break. It's everything I needed. Danny was too hot. I know obviously the videos didn't pop off as much as, you know, the skiing ones do. And that, that's my main thing. I'm a skier. 
So that's my question. What, what do you want to see in the summer? Do you, do you want me to carry on? Obviously, I'll be going to New Zealand. I'll be doing events during the summer as well, ski events. But there's quite a lot of time. It's not like the winter where every day is ski focused. So if you can do your homework and let me know what you want to see, all I want to do is make some good content that you guys enjoy. And that's the only thing that really matters. So let me know what you want to see and rock and roll. I hope some of you got your questions answered uh, today and I hope you're going to answer my question. <laughs>